Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, first off, thank you as always for supporting the channel, subscribing, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Always different types of content coming out between product releases, uh, scammers, thieves on eBay, you name it. We're pretty much incorporating it all this year. But uh, I, my last video, I went over like five, really six big mistakes that I made, and I've had some emails to where... People ask me what I was talking about, the new product releases being trapped and, you know, getting into that funk. So I figured the best thing to do is really to explain this into a video, because if I type it out in email, it's going to be long. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do the best I can on explaining this to everybody. And it this is something that I fell into. And this is back in maybe 15 or 16, maybe even through 17's uh, releases. But back then, remind you, prices were not high, so it didn't matter going for chases. Now it really, really does for what I'm doing. Um, and it, it goes between being, again, a collector, or, you know, if you're going into it for investment, flipping, whatever it may be. All right. Oh, this is stuff I'm getting ready to send in, too. Check that out. That came out of a set that I had. I'm guessing a 7 on this. If it comes back anything higher than a 7, I will be extremely happy. That's Ozzy Smith, rookie. Alrighty. I don't know, what do you guys think? 7? 8? 6? I mean, the front centering onto it, top and bottom, is going to get me. That's why I know it's not going to be a 10, maybe a 9 at the very, very highest. The back has a little bit of centering, too. Now, don't mind me. The, cro the card's crooked in the case, but... I'm always curious to see what everybody thinks, too. That, that'll be going as a regular service this week, guys. So probably in about six to eight weeks, we'll see results on. We'll see how well or we do on to it overall. But, all right, let's go back to the topic here before I get sidebarred and sidetracked here. All right, trapped in new product releases. So we all know these the products have just been getting more and more and more each year. And that goes off of the contracts that tops Panini upper deck um i'm not too sure if leaf has contracts or not but they have to produce so many products per year and that's why you start seeing more and more coming out because they want to be the sole people that own that sports you know tops is the only licensed one but panini can still do cards versus pinos uh ba or basketball and football and then you got hockey's pretty much sorely going to be your upper deck which, again, we do miss our upper deck in all the other sports because, one, you have Jordan and LeBron, and Ben Simmons are solely, you know, with autographs in those sports. But, so, I'm going to pull up this calendar. So, everybody doesn't know, this is a Cardboard Connection. You could get checklists off of this. They have the product releases, all that stuff. And I'm going to use this because they probably got a better calendar for me to look at. Now, some of the product may not be up to date with dates. So, as you can see, we're going to start here in February, or February, whew, March. If you start looking from here, you got Don Russ Baseball, Revolution, there's Hockey, Panini One Football, Absolute Basketball. And it just keeps going down. Inception Baseball, Opening Day. And if you look, you know these are going to change because Topps is not going to release Inception and Opening Day in the same day. And then Hurry Up and Have Heritage come out two days later. So they're, they're going to probably maneuver some of this around. More than likely Sterling will get bumped. But a lot of products. So back when I was really getting into like breaking and buying product, I'd live for Wednesdays and Friday release days. I'd get in everything. What I didn't really learn until later when products started going up in price was the risk and the ROI return on investment was very, very low. And I'm just going to use one for an example, absolute. Unless you pull uh, the Kaboom, I think it was Kaboom or Downtowns, it, they're all scattered about, but it's Kaboom and absolute. Normally it's Kabooms. And you're really not going to get value out of what they're charging per box and the reason i say that is one absolute's very hard to grade the uh thicker cards such as your relics your your relic autographs are usually pretty damaged from uh corners and edges and all that so grading does make it hard onto it it's not a sought after product 
people chase that case hit of the kaboom. So what I learned doing instead of me spending all this money and going into like 10 case breaks to say get a kaboom of LeBron James. Uh, it's probably better for me just to take that money, go out and buy the kaboom and grade it, and I'm more happier later in life. But what I was trying to say into before was I was buying into every single product there was, and I was spending back then, oh, I bet you thousands a week, two, three thousand easy in breaks. And that was across the board because, you know, you want to get in your big stuff, iMac, uh, Flawless, NT, all that. So that all starts adding up, and as we've gone on through the years, products skyrocketed. So now I limit myself of not falling into the trap of like, oh, look at how great these new products are, because the, everybody that's selling is going to say it's great. It's a great product. I'm not a fan of a lot of this stuff, and I tell people that all the time. Like, I'm not a fan of Heritage uh, Baseball at all. A lot of people are. I'm not a fan of Allen and Ginter. There's cool stuff in, don't get me wrong, I love, like, the real one autographs, and I love being able to get, like, a non-baseball auto of somebody out of uh, uh, Allen and Ginter or the Rip Cards. So, I mean, there's a chase there. But, realistically, for what I'm going to be spending to try to get it, and if my team's never hit, you know, it's just cheaper for me to buy my own boxes of it and do my own thing. But there's some cases where buying them boxes, you know you're going to lose money unless you grade the stuff. And Heritage, you know, that's a hard one to grade. I'm just going to be really honest with everybody. Very, very hard grades. Because they're using the older cards, the, I guess you could say the type of card, like this last year was 71, so you have all the black borders around it. They're very, very hard to grade. I've used to grade a lot with Beckett, and guys would send me in. Uh, one guy sent me, I don't know what it was, probably about seven or eight, maybe even more, of uh, Heritage Real One autographs or, you know, the SP versions of stuff. And some did okay, some did not. So I really take a look, hard look into the product itself, and I tell myself, if I buy this, and this is not going into breaks, buy the box, am I have a chance of at least making my money back over time by grading some of the cards into it. So what I end up doing is, if I get on pre-order, just let it sit for a day or so, and I watch some breaks on C, you know, what was in their box, how are these half-case, full-case breaks going, is it really worth it with a rookie card class and everything to grade it out to get my money back or not? If I don't do that, I would want to get in every product there is, and there's a lot of products that just are not going to come back quick enough because of the backlog in all the grading companies for me to maximize my profit to say, hey, I broke even or I made money onto it. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense there offhand with it. Now, there's there's a lot of... I, I love Revolution Basketball, but the prices have just gone so far out. And Select, I, I was a super fan of it till this year when they say they're going to release retail, but I like to be an only hobby only. But when you start looking at the prices you're going to be paying for boxes now or getting into breaks and being able to get the team you want, if you're in it as a collector standpoint and say you're... Let's go with a team that doesn't have, like, Pat Mahomes or somebody and say Buffalo Bills, because Josh Allen's no longer, you know, he's been out for a while and stuff like that. You might get a ton of cards from that, and that's good because you, from your collector standpoint, you're getting your collection of this stuff. Now, if I collected Tom Brady, and that was just it, I would probably just buy the Tom Brady's because I would be spending money unwisely according to my plan. And I could take that money that I was going to spend one way and buy the Tom Brady or two Tom Brady's and maybe go out and buy some boxes of, like, Dynasty Baseball or something. So I'm just throwing different ideas out there of what I do, but I go every week when I place my orders for what I'm getting I literally sit down and I go on eBay and I search PSA 10 and whatever it is. So say, uh, what do I have coming in? Well, I won't be able to look at PSA on some of this stuff. I take it back. I'll look at, like, limited football because it's a new release. 
and I'll say, okay, what's, you know, the top sales of this stuff? And I'll start looking at it and be like, okay. Then normally I'll buy some older product, which will always have the stuff graded into it. And that's where I was talking about looking at the PSA stuff. I might buy some mosaic basketball hangers just so I can keep my basketball allocation. But I look at what PSA 10s are doing, and I know from opening enough of that stuff up how they hit, how well it is. And, you know, that I just, if I buy one box, I'm going to be taking a long shove. If I buy five, six, seven, or eight, I should do fairly well to recoup the money back that I put into it and potentially have some nice cards that are graded out to where it turns a profit and I could go in and buy PC stuff or get into bigger product, which is a bigger gamble, and see how well I do into it. Whether it's like baseball, I'm a fan of Dynasty. I just think it's not loved enough right now. And I'm a fan of definitive baseball. And both of those don't get a whole lot of love. I'm sure that probably in the near future, somebody out there that's doing the hedge funds is going to see that. And they're going to gobble all the stuff up too. So, you know, I just try to think outside the box to where a lot of the other stuff has gone up that's newer. And other stuff that's lagging behind big time. And it's a good product. Even though the price is high. You know, and if, for example, would be I could go out and buy, oh, probably two to three boxes of definitive baseball, which is pretty much, you know, for like $1,500 a box. Or I'd go out and buy like a box of like 1920 prison basketball. I'm only going to get two autos out one way. The other way in baseball, I'm going to get a whole ton more and I could hit Trout, um, Griffey, Ichiro, Nolan Ryan, the rookies. So I always weigh it out. That's why I try to say I try not to get trapped into like always buying all the new product. Now, granted, if I get an allocation, that's one thing, but I don't rebuy into it. And otherwise, you start spending a lot, a lot of money into stuff that may never ever go up unless you hit one of them rare cards into it. So I don't. Like, when you'll see guys having all the new breaks out, you don't see me jumping into all of it anymore. Especially when it's random teams. I'll go into pick your team because I'll be like, well, if I pull a couple of these rookies, it should cover my cost and what I paid into it. But the, if you do that with every single one out there, you're you're going to fall behind. And that's when I say that I got trapped a long time ago. And like, oh, my gosh, you know. Supreme Baseballs this week, five star baseballs next week, and all this stuff. And I was just buying, buying, spending you know, five, six hundred dollars in just that one product. And I just was not getting back a good return at, at all onto it, especially with top teams. So I had to reevaluate how I was doing stuff, and I started cutting product every year. Matter of fact, look right here Tops Defending Baseball. I won't get any on allocation, but I'll probably buy a box or so on it. But uh, I just happened to see it there, and it was drawing my attention. But I really limited what I was starting to get into. And I'm going to give you one more example here. Don Ross basketball this year. I didn't get allocated any. I think last year I had two or three boxes. The last I saw this, it was selling for $1,200 a box. It's because of the chase of the marbles in there and other parallels. But if you don't hit that, that's a big loss. It don't matter if you're going to pull every rookie in the whole class out. You're not going to grade out and get that kind of money back onto it. So I wouldn't get into even Don Rush breaks because I think it's too expensive offhand. Now, granted, I think it's a little more limited in production for hobby, but it's one of those things I'd stay away from. That's my own personal preference onto it. So... In return with what I've been saying and everything, I just don't get trapped into all the new product coming out like I used to. One, because it's more expensive, and I won't see a return on to it at all. Versus if I just pick select products that I like and I know is good in the long haul to where I can return and be able to buy some nice PC cards or long-term investments, I do it. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense onto being trapped into the whole nostalgia onto all the new products just being thrown out every week. I really am very, very picky when it comes to that.
And it's just for the fact is I don't want to wrap my money up in every single product. I want to be in select few products so I can concentrate on those mostly. But you will see me if I get stuff on allocation, either put in a store at a cheaper price or I'll open it myself up just because there's very low risk involved into it. But uh, hopefully that the we have the giveaway video pop up today. So UPS should be coming. This is a Monday video here. And I may scatter these other videos throughout the week depending on wh what if UPS shows up tomorrow, I should say offhand. And then we'll look at how, some of the other areas that I was talking about too in that past video on my mistakes. And I'll go in a little bit more detail in some of the categories onto it. So if you hear me saying in one of the videos, like uh, this should be a Wednesday video or I refer to it on the wrong day that it's actually out, it's mostly because I had to rechange stuff around because things coming out or, you know, uh, some a breaker did something outlandish out there and thieves some stuff. So I, I might be playing around with how the videos release. Tomorrow I'll be working PSA, hopefully, for five, six hours, so uh, I wanted to get some of the videos done this weekend for the week, so don't be surprised if the dates don't match up with when they get released, because I might have to bump a few things around onto it. But other than that, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, let me know if you guys, uh, what you guys think about all the new products coming out. Do you guys feel the need that you guys get into every product? Do you get into every product coming out, whether it's by sport or by between Tops and Panini. Because I know not everybody does every sport and everything. And I just like to see how everybody else does it and stuff like that there. Um, should make some interesting comments offhand. And as always, I will respond back too. Because I like seeing how everybody else views with all this mass dumping of products throughout each month. Especially towards the end of the year as well too. Because they just get heavily released then. Alright everybody, I'm out for this video. Take care, have a good week, and I will catch you later.